Bon, així anar en semal sa la torre. Ha baixat l'aigua, ahí per la nit se veia l'aigua del riu Arras i pues molt a por perquè pareixia que estava a desbordar. Això és el cole. I mesones de la torre.
We told you about this a little earlier. Parts of Spain are recovering today from massive flooding, and the danger may not be over yet. This week's storm is being blamed for at least 60 deaths, and the situation is so dire, some residents needed to be rescued by a bulldozer. Look at those images coming into us right now. Spain's prime minister spoke this morning and told flood victims, quote, we will not abandon you. CBS News foreign correspondent Chris Livesay is monitoring the situation for us from Rome this morning. So, Chris, uh, we just showed some of that video. Uh, the damage is extensive. Also, some incredible rescues. Uh, what are you learning? Yeah, some incredible rescues and some terrifying images of those mudslides charged by torrential rain and hail. You know, unfortunately, this kind of imagery is becoming more and more normal here in the Mediterranean. That bulldozer scooping people out of their, their buildings, bringing them to safety, helicopters plucking people from the, from the water. This is mostly happening in the region and around the city of Valencia in eastern Spain, as well as the southern part of the country in one town around Valencia called Chiva. It experienced more rainfall than it normally gets in one year in just the span of eight hours. So really seeing some horrific imagery coming out of that. And as you mentioned, just the death toll that continues to climb. You know, when I woke up this morning, it was just a few people who had been reported dead. And just over the span of a few hours, it had jumped to dozens and dozens. And now we have more than 60 people confirmed dead. Chris, uh, let's talk about why the flooding was so bad in Valencia. I mean, uh, it's rare to see images like this coming in. Right. I mean, look, this is the rainy season in Spain. Uh, they call it Dana, uh, but it's also a combination of factors. You, you do have warmer temperatures and warmer atmosphere that's able to hold more water, uh, but that's also combining with a parched earth with, with drier circumstances on the ground. This is a region, I mean, the entire Mediterranean is experiencing water scarcity. And so it, it's kind of like the, the scene that anybody who's a black thumb uh, would recognize. You go out of town for a few days, you come back, your plants are dead. Your instinct is to immediately dump some water on them and you see that water just spill all over the place. It comes out the holes and into that dish at the bottom. That's because it no longer has the, the capacity to actually retain the water because that's how parched it's been. And this is a result of climate change. You're seeing water scarcity, drought in some cases. And then when those torrential floods do come, the earth no longer has the capacity to actually suck up that water. And it just runs rabid. I mean, we're seeing the effects, as you say, of climate change every single day, not just here, but all around the world. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to see where um, this goes unless countries take this threat very seriously. And you can see what you just described, Chris, uh, about what we've done to the atmosphere and what we're doing to the terrain uh, leads to that type of flooding and people lose their lives. And we're going to see more of that um, in the years ahead. Just let's say reporting from Rome for us this morning. Thank you, Chris.